Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 27th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. We had a great day today as part of Bird of Prey Days 2024, and the events will continue tomorrow, so stay tuned till the end of the video where I'll cover the schedule for tomorrow. There were southerly winds and good migration last night, so Kim and I started out the morning bright and early at the Braddock Bay West Spit in time for sunrise. We're starting to see the first signs of blue jay migration with small to medium flocks, maybe up to around 20 or 30 at a time, but those numbers will continue to increase over the next few weeks, up to hundreds at a time. Here we have a shorebird that was walking along the water's edge. We see that it's brown on the back and has a white breast with some spotting on it and an orange bill with a black tip. This is a spotted sandpiper. And you may notice that spotted sandpipers have a distinctive way of bobbing around. Here we have some large grayish blue birds with their necks tucked into an S shape and long trailing legs. These are great blue herons. This osprey caught a big fish and flew right towards us with it. And here's one more closer look as they passed right overhead. Here we have a warbler with some grayish tones, some black here around the eye, a white throat, some striping to the front, and distinctive yellow patches. This is a yellow rumped warbler. And just as we went to leave, someone pointed out this bird to us, and it's not the greatest photo, but we see an overall yellowish bird that has more of a bluish gray head, and perhaps the most distinctive thing is a bold white eye ring with white spectacles. This is our first of season, blue-headed vireo. From the West Spit, we had a total of 53 species. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park to start the Bird of Prey Day festivities and start the Hawk Watch. Today was overcast with a moderate southerly wind, and for the first few hours it stayed that way. Then we had some rain that moved in at around 12.45 and shut the flight down for about 45 minutes, but after that it started to brighten up a little bit, though remained completely overcast, and we got a few more hours of the flight in before more rain shut us down for the day. Because of the overall gloomy and rainy conditions, the species that we saw the most of today were ones that don't mind putting a little bit of energy into flapping. So not so many things like broadwings and turkey vultures, but a good number of things like sharp-shinned hawks, northern harriers, and this species. Here we see a bird with very pointed wings. It's a tiny raptor that's light underneath. This is a small light-colored falcon. It's a male American kestrel. Here we have a large sparrow with a distinctive black and white patterning to the head. This is our first of season white crowned sparrow. Here we have a brown thrasher that perched up nicely and sang for us. Remember that brown thrashers mimic the calls and songs of other birds, similar to a mockingbird, but with the brown thrasher they always repeat each call or song twice. So it has a very distinctive rhythm to it where it's giving each call two times before moving on to the next compared to the northern mockingbird, which will repeat each song or call more times, let's say up to five times, before moving on to the next one. Here we have a plover that landed in the grass. We see a double breast band. This is a kill deer. Despite the gloomy conditions, we had some bald eagles on the move, including this adult. This species was the star of the show today. Here we have a hawk where we see a long tail and long wings with rounded tips, so we should be thinking excipiter. On this particular bird, we see orange barring underneath, so we know it's an adult. And we see a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are the same length and a small head. This is an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a turkey vulture. We see the two-toned appearance to the underside. We see a small reddish head and a slight V to the wings. And because of the gloomy conditions, we only had a few dozen turkey vultures today. Here we have a large dark raptor. We see a relatively large head and bill on this bird, and we see a lot of white throughout the underside, especially here in the wing pit area. This is a juvenile bald eagle that would have been born last year, and we can see that it's actually starting to molt, starting to grow in some new inner primary feathers. We had some small turns from the genus Sterna, and there's two different species that we typically see. One is the common tern, and the other is Forster's tern, which is more rare. In this case, we see a tern that's gray underneath and has an even gray to the entire top side of the wing, making this a common tern. Here we have a flock of shorebirds, and we can see long trailing legs and feet, but relatively thin short bills. This is a flock of lesser yellow legs. 
We had rain from around 1245 to 130, and this is what it looked like as we resumed the count after that rain passed. Here we have a sharp-shinned hawk that decided to land and rest in a tree for a few seconds before carrying on, and that's something that we saw frequently today. This sharp-shinned hawk stood out because it appears to have a damaged tail with some feathers sticking out normally and others hanging down more. Here's another species that we had our first of season today. Here we see a flying cigar with thin sickle-shaped wings and completely gray underneath. This is a chimney swift. Here we have a small swallow that's white underneath except for a brown breastband. This is a bank swallow. Here we have another adult sharp-shinned hawk. Again, notice how squared off the tip of the tail is and how small the head is. And we ended up with over 100 sharp-shinned hawks today, and most of them came through really low. Now, some of them were over towards the lake shore, some were over towards the parkway, but we also had a really good number come low and close to the platform, giving excellent views for all of the Bird of Prey Day's visitors. And even with the gloomy conditions, we still had a few of these push through. Here we see a small buteo with somewhat pointed wings, a very straight trailing edge to the wings that is dark, brown barring underneath, and a dark tail with a white band. This is an adult broad-winged hawk. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings. We should be thinking falcon. We see some dark streaking underneath, as well as a dark tail with some white bands on it. This is a merlin. And here's a bird that looks similar in some ways, but very different in others. We don't see those very pointed wingtips. Instead, they're more rounded wingtips. And the streaking underneath is vertical, but this one's more brown rather than the dark streaking we saw in that merlin. This is another sharp-shinned hawk. In this case, it's a juvenile because of that vertical brown streaking underneath. Here we have a raptor with a long tail and thin, somewhat pointed wings. Very lanky overall and an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier. And because of how plain it is underneath with hardly any streaking to the upper breast and very plain patagial area, this looks like a juvenile northern harrier. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings. We should be thinking falcon. Very light underneath with just a little bit of spotting. This is a male American kestrel. Towards the end of the day, another band of rain was moving in, but we had a nice push of raptors ahead of it, including some sharp-shinned hawks and American kestrels and even a peregrine falcon. That rain hit around 4.30 and ended the count for the day. From the Hawkwatch, we had a total of 74 species today. I had five new species for the season today, which were blue-headed vireo, Baltimore oriole, yellow warbler, chimney swift, and white-crowned sparrow. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 32 turkey vultures, 4 osprey, 9 bald eagles, 12 northern harriers, 112 sharp-shinned hawks, 11 broad-winged hawks, 2 golden eagles, both of which were distant over the parkway and I was unable to get photos, 13 American kestrels, 1 merlin, and 1 peregrine falcon, for a total of 197 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 39,087 and the season total to 47,207. Taking a look at the forecast for the last day of Bird of Prey Day's weekend, we're looking at considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers and thunder possible, a high up around 72, so much warmer than recent weather. Winds west-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so that's a really good wind for us, and normally we would expect a big flight. My only concern is how gloomy it's going to be. It looks like they're saying a lot of clouds and some rain, so that means that maybe we'll have thick cloud cover again like we had today. If that's the case, I would expect similar results to today, where it was mostly things like sharp-shinned hawks and falcons that don't mind pushing through those gloomy conditions. Now, if it ends up that it's actually brighter and if we get a little bit of sunshine and conditions are good enough for things like vultures and broad wings to be flying, then we could end up with a bigger day. For Monday, it's looking mostly cloudy with a high of 53 and east-northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. would only expect light, maybe moderate migration. And for Tuesday, again, cloudy with occasional rain showers, a high around 60 and light northerly winds. would only expect light migration. Taking a look at the Bird of Prey Day's schedule for tomorrow, starting off we have the Cornell Raptor Program presenting a live raptor presentation at 11 a.m., followed by a meet and greet from 12 to 1. 
At 1.30 p.m., we have What's That Hawk Raptor ID, where you get to learn about identification and then come out and test it out at the Hawk Watch. At 2 p.m., there is an Owl Woods Walk. From 2 to 4, we have a live raptor meet and greet with the Messenger Woods Wildlife Care and Education Center. And there's also a poster presentation, Change in Historic Weather Trends and Impact on Observed Raptor Migration from Bob Williams. And of course, I'll be out at the Hawk Watch. The time listed here is 11 to 3. That's when there will be additional interpreters available to uh, talk to people about what we're seeing. But I'll be out at the platform all day like I always am. Well, despite a little bit of rain today, we had those good southerly winds, a lot of new species starting to show up, and we ended up with a pretty good raptor flight for Bird of Prey Day's weekend. It's looking like the winds again tonight and into tomorrow are looking favorable. We'll cross our fingers for another good raptor flight and hopefully some new warblers as well. I hope to see you out soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.